Today you will be hearing my final results on the El Rocio Czar. This machine was sent to me by Prima Coffee for a one month trial of my thoughts and opinions as in exchange for a simple YouTube video. They have no bias in what I say in this video, but I do want to disclose that. I did get to lend this out for free, um, but they don't see this video before I put it out to YouTube. So first off, I just want to say welcome to Kabeen's Coffee Corner. This channel is designed to help you choose coffee gear you want to brew with at home. You'll find a lot of different reviews and comparisons here on the channel. So I would love for you to please like and subscribe. That really helps me push out more content for more people. Also, if you're looking at purchasing this machine, please use the affiliate link in the description below. I'll make a slight commission at no extra charge to you if you're looking at purchasing this machine. Also, I have an Instagram account called Kabeen's Coffee Corner. You're more than welcome to follow me there. And finally, if you would really like to support me as a YouTuber, consider subscribing to my Patreon account. You can find the links and descriptions for all that below. Let's go ahead and dive into it. So like I said, this was sent to me for a one-month trial on my opinions. Um, and after a month of using it, I feel like I've still kind of just grasped the surface of this. There's so much this machine can do um, in the farm in the realm of an espresso machine. But I'm gonna go ahead and be really, really nitpicky on this. So just be aware in the comments, I'm gonna make some really, really nitpicky remarks on this machine solely because I feel like it needs to be done and I wanna let you know fully what I think. There's a few other people like Spromethius and Lance Hem Hem Hendricks reviewed this machine as well too. So they have a little bit more stuff um, than I do and a little different perspective on it than I do. So feel free to check those videos out as well. So let's go ahead and dive into it. This is a $3,500 dual boiler, $3,700 and $3,750 espresso machine. Um, it's a dual boiler and one of the unique things that this has is the ability to pressure profile, which means adjust the pressure of the machine on the fly. So you can control the group head pressure that is going on on this machine. Um, and you do that simply through this controller panel right here. So basically this entire machine is controlled through this panel. It's got just a little cable here that plugs in the back of the machine. You can control the pressure here. It has a touch screen which allows you to control the temperature of the machine, allow you to turn on and off the brew boiler, set an auto on feature so it'll automatically turn on the same time every single day. Um, Pre-infusions, there's a lot of different things that you can do with this controller, but one of the main things is allowing to control the pressure via this knob here. It also allows you to set up regular ways to brew. So you can simply click a button here and it will brew your preset based off of this controller and you can set it to do that. So you can simply click the button and walk away. I did not get too much into that solely because I was comparing this with a flare and I just thought it was more interesting to adjust it manually like I'm used to. So I didn't get to mess around too much with the machine on the realms of presetting the machine. The machine comes with two board, uh, porta filters, a spouted one and a um, bottomless one. Both nice wooden accents. You can also get this in a lighter color wood. All of this matches the frame here on the side here, uh, the knobs as well. It also comes with a stainless steel tamper. This is just an okay tamper. It's great for the machine that it comes with. I'm not complaining about it any means but I did swap this out and I prefer to use my Barista Hustle Tamper. I find there's a little bit of coffee grounds on the edges of the basket while using this tamper with the stock 18 gram basket that was sent to me with um, the El Rose Gozar. So this doesn't fit the basket perfectly, but it still does a good job. It also has this tamping mat here. Uh, it has the El Rose Gozar logo as well as the website on the tamping mat. Place to put your tamper and then a place to put your porta filter. So you can use the spouted one, it fits there perfectly. I find this just to be okay, but it's at least nice and beneficial to have a tamping mat with it. I haven't seen that included in too many machines. Um, it's got a built-in water tank. It can be pumped in um, and it can be drained. The drip tray can be drained as well. It comes with a tube to drain it. Um, simply you remove this part right here. And then you have your water tank in here. Um, and then it also allows you to let you know if the water tank is empty as well. On here it's got this piece of metal um, on top of the drip tray. I don't know why it's there, but it's just a way to, not drip tray, a way to heat the cups up, things like that. Um, I find the cups to be nice and warm with the top of this machine. Uh, this is three not neutral size cups here. So we got the espresso, a five ouncer, and then a 
12 ounce or to kind of give you a size of how much you can fit on the drip tray. There's not a ton of room. You could probably fit two more of these cups on here, but in or one of these as well. So not a ton of room. I can fit more on a Breville Dual Boiler or a Rocket Apartamento. Um, a lot of different machines have a bigger capacity for this. Um, one of the big complaints is the steam wand hits right here. And I found that to be very annoying. I reached out to Prima and they mentioned to me that they're working on potentially changing that down the road. Um, so please look for that and don't necessarily rule it out because of that, um, because it is changing down the road. But there is no guarantee on it. And I find that incredibly frustrating because you do get a pool of water if the steam wand is here or if you put it here, it kind of gets in the way of the group head. Um, and then you have a hot water tap here. I also per don't, I wish they would have put like an arrow here to indicate which way you're supposed to turn that. I find it very kind of confusing on which way to turn it on and which way to turn it off because it does not specify on that machine. Again, this is me being incredibly nitpicky here, so don't get too much into that. Um, we have a decently large capacity drip tray. Um, I haven't found any problems with that. We have a the the button to basically automatically brew and then we have the power button here and then we have a bigger power button on the back here. The feet are adjustable on every side. I find that to be nice but I also find it to be slightly annoying because the back ones are harder to adjust than the front ones because the wood panels get on the side of it and kind of make it a little difficult. I find that there's a little bit of rattling going on here from the top of the water reservoir cover. Um, I wish they would have figured out a better way to do that. Um, if this was my machine, I would just probably put some rubber pads in there to fix that issue. Um, I find this is very, very nice here. It has the El Rocio Zar logo um, in the entire top part of the machine. It's nice. It looks really good to take a photo of your shot of espresso next to the logo. Put it on Instagram if that's your thing. Um, over here we have the on button. We have the steam pressure gauge, so you know if your steam is ready to go. It's nice that you can independently turn that on separately from the boiler. Um, and then we have the pressure gauge right here. And the pressure gauge you want to look at while you're adjusting this, and that'll allow you to choose how you want to do it. You can also adjust pre-infusion, things like that. Um, so that being said, I hope that kind of gives you a little bit of overview. Now let's get into the nitty gritty and what I like and don't like feature-wise on this. Um, the, the steam one arm is incredibly powerful, um, gives you plenty of ability to steam milk, um, so much faster than the majority of the machines that I've used in the past, which is great, um, better than my Breville Dual Boiler, Rocket Departamento, things like that. The steam one is phenomenal outside of this little hiccup right here. Um, like I said, I do wish the knobs were a little different, but they do feel nice to move at least. Um, hot water tap fills up great. You can adjust it so it doesn't come off super fast, which is nice. Um, the one thing that I did notice though, when when using the pre -inf when using the dial uh, to control the pressure, I've, I have quite a bit of experience controlling pressure of shots from using things like the Flare and the Robot is most of my espresso background. So I've been controlling pressure for three or four years now as I've been making espresso at home, almost five years. And I find that with something like the flare, you get more feedback and it's easier to do rather than being hunched over with the machine. But I do like the opportunity to not have to use the lever and just simply set this up to nine bars and it automatically brew out that way. So it's nice and versatile to give you the options for that. Um, with this, there's kind of this interesting problem that you have with being able to control the pressure. If you're fairly new to espresso, there's this thing called dialing in process where you adjust the grind size of your coffee that affects the time of your shot coming out. Um, so typically you aim for an 18 gram dose that you're grinding out and you aim for it to be coming out in 25 seconds and you're aiming for 36 grams of liquid in your cup, for example. Grinding adjusting grind setting in order to get that um, is a very confusing process for a lot of people starting off. When you add things like pressure profiling, it's even more confusing. So with pressure profiling, you're not only dealing with the grind setting, you're dealing with also adjusting the pressure of the machine, which can also affect your grind setting. Um, if you're pulling shots at eight, nine, 10 bars of pressure, you're gonna need to grind finer 
than if you were at six bars of pressure. If you pre-infuse for a certain amount of time, that's also going to affect your grinding setting. So basically where I'm going with this is it becomes very, very overwhelming for somebody who's not fully advanced in espresso. And that can be very, very problematic in this machine. However, this machine does open up a ton of possibilities of expanding your espresso down the road. It allows you to take it further and really, really um, change up how you want to brew based off of the beans that you have, which is something that you don't get in most machines. When I look at this and compared to like a decent espresso machine, which I've never personally used, um, I think there's a couple pros to it. Is one, you don't have the tablet on top. Um, the looks look better, and it makes a better noise when it's, it's brewing because the decent does it in a different way outside of a boiler. Um, so I think that the looks of this, like this style of this machine would be preferred to sit on your counter in my home versus a futuristic looking decent, even though the decent has a little bit more abilities. Uh, when brewing back-to-back -back shots, I did six milk drinks as I normally do with machines to kind of test them out. The drip tray had no problem holding the capacity of it. The machine had no problem getting through it. It's nice that they give a nice indication of the amount of water or if you're low on water in the machine and that has been good. Uh, the shot qualities out of this is phenomenal. The drinks are phenomenal. Um, from Lance Hendrick, he mentioned that the temp stability is phenomenal. I didn't test that because I trust his opinion on it. Um, but it's very, very good to get easy, consistent shots time and time after, again, using this machine. And it's been a joy owning this, but I don't think this is something that would live on my counter based off of the needs that I have. I find most of the time I can, I can get by with what I need with a flare. Um, however, with the steaming melt capability, that's something that puts this on a completely different level. And I do mention I like the ability to control the pressure while also potentially being able to set a preset and just click and go type of a thing rather than dealing with the knob the entire time. Um, so that's, that's the privilege. Uh, the touchscreen seemed to be super responsive on the remote. Um, obviously, it's not iPhone responsive, but it does get the job done. Um, so I hope this helps you out. I know this might not be as in detail as some of you might like it, but um, this is my opinion of it. And $3,750 I think could be worth it for some, but for me, it's kind of not exactly what I'm aiming for aesthetic-wise, and that's something that I wouldn't necessarily want to put on my counter. But it is a very, very pretty machine, and I think it does look great, just not not what I'm aiming for on my coffee bar. Um, so I hope this helps you a little bit in maybe getting a couple of the questions answered. Um, Prima, I know you're probably going to watch this, so if if you get the Steam One Arm fixed, I think it's going to be a phenomenal machine for a lot of people to put on their bar, and it is an incredibly, incredible joy to be able to use this. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments below, and I'd love to help you out answering a few things. And uh, again, thank you so much for watching, and please like and subscribe if you find a benefit to this channel or this video. Thank you.